A classic Hollywood trope is the idea of a poster with a photo of a given criminal along with very large print text that would say something like, wanted, dead or alive. But did these actually ever exist and could you actually kill someone legally when such a poster was issued by the authorities? To answer the first question, yes, there are many known instances of such dead or alive posters being put up by the state or other entities, but that doesn't actually tell the whole story. Just because a poster stated something like dead or alive, it did not grant any individual the right to kill the person without legal consequences. For example, consider the infamous murder of Jesse James at the hands of his outlaw buddies Charlie and Robert Ford. Missouri Governor Thomas Crittenden negotiated with various rail companies to offer a $5,000 or $131,000 today reward each for the capture of Jesse James or his brother Frank. The subsequent posters noted, Wanted, Dead or Alive, Jesse or Frank James. Ultimately, the Ford brothers arranged with the governor in secret to bring their buddy Jesse in. Deal struck on the morning of April the 3rd, 1882, the brothers had breakfast with James. After eating, the trio walked into the living room. When James turned his back on the brothers, reportedly to clean a dusty photo, Robert Ford shot him in the back of the head. Unfortunately for Charlie and Robert, when they went to collect the reward, they instead found themselves promptly arrested for murder and soon after were sentenced to hang. You see, James was unarmed at the time of his death and just as importantly was not in any way resisting arrest or attempting to flee. He seemingly didn't even know that the Ford brothers were there to arrest him that day. To get away with killing such a person you were attempting to collect a bounty on, the person needed to be resisting in some way, particularly in a way that threatened your own life. Thus, you could only kill them if it was self-defense, which wouldn't have been any different than if someone attacked you outside of any bounty scenario. Except for one caveat. For quite some time in US history, it was legal to use deadly force against a fleeing felon, even if your own life wasn't immediately threatened. The logic behind this was seemingly that chasing down a fleeing person could be dangerous in unforeseen ways. It also incentivized criminals to not try to flee in the first place upon discovery. Granted, if no one was around a witness, who's to say the dangerous criminal you killed didn't actually actively threaten your life in an imminent way to cause you to defend yourself. And given that bringing such a criminal in across long distances used to be an extremely dangerous affair in many cases, anecdotally it seems like it wasn't uncommon to simply rid the world of the alleged criminal first and then lie about what happened after. A body is so much safer to transport and people were quick to believe a dangerous criminal would fight tooth and nail to escape because, after all, in many cases they probably did if they knew being brought in was going to likely result in a hang they really had nothing to lose. Going back to the wanted dead or alive posters, there are a few more caveats to consider as well. First, while depictions in movies and games often show clear photographs, in reality many historical examples were simple sketches and often even got the descriptions of the person wrong. Further, in the vast majority of cases it was lawmen themselves who would take it upon themselves to go hunt down the criminal and collect the reward, not someone in the general public. Naturally, while finding criminals was sort of their job anyway, criminals that had bounties on their heads tended to get much higher priority and a lot more effort. This brings us around to the question of who pays. In most cases, as you may have guessed from our former mentioned instance of Missouri Governor Thomas Critterton getting railroad companies to put up the reward money, this usually wasn't actually the state itself, but rather private companies or individuals who had particular interest in seeing someone brought to justice and wanted to incentivize law enforcement to actually do something about it. It was also these private entities that were more likely to have something like dead or alive put in the poster if they were involved. The legality of killing the person wasn't really relevant here, only what the stipulations were for getting the reward. And if the company or person just wanted the alleged criminal out of the way, regardless of how it happened, they might state that they were happy to pay even if the person was killed. This would incentivize more people to try to capture the person as the risk would be less than if it was required that the person be brought in alive no matter what. If the wanted poster and reward were coming from the state alone, it was far more likely that the poster would say something more benign and more likely that the bounty would only be paid if the person was brought in alive and in some cases even requiring that the person be convicted. Again, all of this had more to do with the stipulation surrounding how one could get paid rather than the legality of anything suggested in the poster. 